Hi everyone, I'm Needlecraft Danny. This is floss tube number 120 and I'm here to show you another big finish. Um, I already had one last week and now I can show you one finish uh, more. And of course I also show you all my um, other whips that I stitched on, my plans for this week. And yeah, basically that's going to be the video. So let's get started. Um, and let's get started with my finish. I know last week I showed my finish at the end of all the whips. This week I decided to start with, with my finish. So, my finish this week is the Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. And here he is all done. I'm going to show you a picture of what he looked like last week here. So basically, since you saw him last, I finished off that band over here and then finished the last band, which is another frostage band, and then he was done um, with this one. My plan was to stitch on him on Tuesday because he was my oldest non-full coverage whip. I started him back in September 2019. Um, so on Monday and on Tuesday, I both had night shifts. And normally during night shift, I stitch on a smaller or easier full coverage project. And that was my plan this time uh, once again. And I took mini Cinderella with me and I forgot my floss. So no stitching <laughs> on full coverage. I still had Twisted Band Sampler with me and I had my floss for the Twisted Band Sampler with me. So I decided to continue stitching on this one. And basically I finished uh, this band over here, finished all the specialty stitches and did a little bit of a start on this band over here. Um, but I do mark all my progress um, and my work days, my cross stitch days um, in a bullet journal. I basically mark on which day I stitched on which project. And when I have a partial finish or a page finish, I mark it in a different color. Um, a fully finish is another color. So basically, I did not want to finish that band and the whole project the same day, <laughs> because then I would not know how to, how to mark it in my bullet journal. So I decided during the night shift, I finished that band, will small start on this band, just finishing off my color, and then I put it away. And I did have a book with me, so I started to read a little bit, um, and just no stitching anymore. And the night shift after, I uh, once again took Mini Cinderella with me, this time with the floss. But the book I had started the night shift before, I really wanted to finish, and therefore again no stitching. <laughs> but well, that's what happens sometimes. Um, and then the Twisted Band Sampler was finished on Tuesday because I did spend a little bit more time on Tuesday for this one. I think I took about two hours um, until I had completely finished it. So, yeah, I'm super happy. As I said, I started him September 2019. In the year 2019, I then did the first four bands. So with this one, it's always one cross stitch band, then one specialty stitches band, and so on through the whole design. And in 2019, I've stitched those four bands, and I think I started the fifth one. And in 2020, I did basically nothing on this project. I did a bit more, if memory serves right, I think so. Um, I did a bit more in band number five. I did not even finish the first color in band number five before the year was done. <laughs> and in 2021, so last year, I stitched a lot on this project. I started to take him with me to work every day, or basically every day. And I finished band 5 through to um, band number 12, so until this point. And this year, I then just had to do those last five bands. And I'm so happy with how he turned out. Um, this is stitched on a 32 count white overlassant linen and I'm stitched it completely as indicated 
in the pattern. Um, there's a conversion for, sorry, my, my arm gets a little bit heavy. And there's a conversion for Vera Soir, one for DNC and one for Dinky Dyes. I decided to go with the Dinky Dyes and then stitched as indicated full crosses, one over two full cross. And the specialty stitches are all done with one strand of floss, except for the satin stitches in band number 10. Those are done with two. Um, as you can see, every um, band has a different design. A few of those specialty stitches have been repeated in different uh, bands, but for the most part, there were different stitches in every um, band. I don't know the names for all of them, but I thought I'd um, show you a little bit closer and maybe point out stitches I really enjoyed. So yeah, that's basically that. Those stitches in the middle, I don't know how well you can see those. Um, I think Norwich stitches they're called. I, I really like those. They look fantastic. Um, yeah. Those are pretty cool in the middle. Those were all super tedious. Those stitches are so tiny. Basically one over one and that for the whole band. So that was yeah, tedious and a bit annoying because you basically made no progress at all. And it was the last band I wanted to finish in uh, 2021. So I was really looking forward to finish my year end goal and it just I did not make any progress in this band because it was just so tiny stitches. <laughs> and my favorite stitches based, um, I think, were those letter stitches in the last specialty stitches band. I really enjoyed those. They were a lot of fun. So yeah, that's the whole twist band sampler. Now he's done and I'm so happy to have him done. I have no immediate plans to FFO him. I never do for any of my projects, but I'm just really glad that he's finished. He looks amazing, really does. Yeah, that's my finish. Super happy, as I said, it's just, it still feels a little bit strange to actually have him done. <laughs> as I said, I started him September, 2019. That's two and a half years stitching on, well, for me, the, that's quite a small project, <laughs> especially considering it's non-full coverage and it's not super big. It was super easy to take with me to work because my role, I always roll my projects this way and he's not very long, so he fits in a bag very easily. And I always, I only needed my dinky dice colors, which basically means I um, just, needed to take those dinky dies and I don't need them at home for any other stitching so I never took them out of the bag and therefore never I was never able to forget them they were always in that bag so yeah it was really nice stitching on this one especially as a work project I really enjoyed that and at work um, it was really easy to stitch on on the band sampler because cross stitches are always easy to stitch because you just follow the chart um, and it's not super complicated because they're just on the diagonal. So I wasn't likely to lose my place in the chart. And those specialty stitches, once you figured out how they work, did a few. Um, you did not really have to think about where to go next or anything like that. They were just super repetitive and you just continued down until you finished one row of the, or one, one diagonal of those specialty stitches. So really super easy to take with me to work. So it's a little bit sad. He's done. There is a companion piece to this one. I think it's called the Twisted Rainbow Sampler or anything, something like that. Um, I'm still not sure if I want to stitch the other one. It's basically, the other one has the diagonals like this and is on black fabric. And I don't enjoy black set, uh, black fabric. <laughs> so we will see if I ever do the companion piece, but I'm just really happy my Twisted Band Sampler is done. Um, really happy and really sad. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said on Tuesday, I only needed about two hours to, to finish him. 
So I took another self-care day and enjoyed just doing everything else except stitching. Um, because I kind of have those finished hangovers anyway. So I don't feel like stitching immediately after I finish something. Um, and to just take this day off works for me so I can start stitching the next day. If I force myself to stitch on something the day I finish something else, I kind of fall into this hangover a little bit more and need one or two weeks until I'm over that point. So for me, it worked really well to just take the, the day I finish it off. Those last two projects are both finished early in the morning. So that worked really well. Okay, I think I have now talked enough about my one project. <laughs> so let's move to all the other things I worked on. As I said, Twist the Band Sampler was my work project. So I needed something else to take with me to work. And in the end, I was really, it was really hard to decide on something. In the end, I decided for Sleepy Hollow by Glennon Place. This is going to be the finished piece. And um, yeah, I show you a picture of what it looked like last time here. And this is where I got to. So I did basically not a lot. I did this lightest orange in those four pumpkins and the white in those two skulls. And that's it. Um, this is stitched on 28 count casual linen in the colorway Haunted by Picture This Plus. And I'm stitching two over two full crosses. Needleman is from Lanka Designs. And I stitched this one with anchor colors, which is also one of the reasons I decided to take this one with me for travel stitching. First of all, it's also quite small. This is the whole row, so it also fits nicely in the back. Um, last time I stitched on this one, I decided I want to finish all of the border first before I move into the picture. Um, which means I only need a few colors to take with me for the border. Um, and as I said, I stitched this with anchor colors, so I don't take any colors out of my master set of DMC that I then need to remember to take out when I get home and to put back in when I go to work the next day. I just always have them with me um, and can always leave them in the back because I only need those anchor colors for this project. I'm not taking the beads or the Krennic with me to work. There's, I think, three different colors of Krennic and two colors of beads, especially in the border not taking that with me. Um, whenever I stitch on him at home, I then, next time I stitch on him, I will then fill in all of the Krennic and beads I can already do before I take him with me to work again and just stitch with the anchor colors. Um, yeah, not a whole lot done, but I hope with taking him as work project, I can slowly do quite a bit of progress over time. Until I show you next time, I really hope I have finished this part of the border with um, all the back stitching there is to do and all those last DMC colors. And I think I then want to move over that part or over here. Not sure about that yet. But yeah, that's the plan with Sleepy Hollow. Um, so as it's my work project, you will see this a bit more often over the next few weeks, at least that's the plan. Okay. And then we move into my normal rotation and all the things I did since I saw you last. So last Monday I was stitching on Colorado Mountains by Golden Kite as I do every Monday. Um, Monday is the day I stitch on my oldest full coverage piece. And also Monday is Golden Kite Day. Um, my three oldest full coverage projects are all, golden, are all golden kites. So that should be no problem. And this is my oldest full coverage piece. And with um, Tiger Chilling Out, the project I finished one and a half weeks ago, done. This is my oldest project overall. So, yeah, stitching on this one every Monday until I hopefully finish it this year. 
So let's show you a picture of what it looked like last time here. And this is Verga 2, so not a whole lot. But with Night Shift and filming and editing, I just I knew I did not have a whole lot of time, so that's fine. What I did is basically all that's done in this column because I started that one. Um, there's not a whole lot of park threads left in there, but they are especially orangey colors, so a lot up here in the mountains and not so much down here. But we will see about that. And this is the whole piece. So yeah, today stitching a bit more on this one and hopefully getting the column done. It is stitched on 25 count even weave. I'm stitching 2 over 110 stitch. And I think the right side is about here. So still quite a bit to go. I think I'm at 55%, something like that. So yeah, still quite a bit to go. I think I still have about 25,000 stitches to do. Something along those lines. But yeah, that's Color and Mountains. Really happy um, with how it looks so far. Um, not super excited about the progress I did last week, but as I said, I'm going to stitch on it this week um, and today as well. But we get into plans a little bit later. Um, my next project was another golden kite. Um, it's called the Jimny Sweep. This one was for Bibgo. I'm uh, Bibgo is basically the brainchild of Jesse Marie Desta, and it's a Facebook group. And basically, you have a bingo board with 25 squares, and you fill those with your projects and your goals, and you can kind of make it your own, your board, your rules. And for me, I put my year end goals on there. So the goals I want to reach at the end of the year. And every month, two of those squares get called. And I try to stitch on those then. My whip go days are Wednesday and Thursday. So every Wednesday and Thursday, I try to stitch on one of my whip go projects. For this, this month, the Jimmy Sweep was called. And I'm participating in the Magical Stitches Mystery Year Facebook group. It's a challenge group. It's a closed group. You can't join anymore. But they have weekly and monthly challenges. And those I normally do on Friday and Saturday, sometimes Sunday. Um, but I try to do the weekly challenges with a Bipco project that has already been called, but I haven't finished my goal yet, which is basically nearly all of them. Um, and this week, for this random Ripco called not finished project, the Jimny Sweep got chosen. That basically means I had to do, I think, 810 stitches for the weekly challenges and another 1,010 stitches for the monthly challenge. And I was super happy because I finished that on Thursday. So no additional additional stitching on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to finish my magical stitches challenges. Um, so let me show you a picture of what it looked like last time here. And this is where I got to. So basically, I got close to 2,000 stitches in. And you probably can't see where. <laughs> um, this one I stitch extreme cross country. So basically I take the next color that's missing from the top left corner. I go down the column in the first page from left to right. And uh, whenever I find a symbol that's not yet stitched, I stitch that color over the whole project before I move on to the next color. So, since you saw this last, I finished two colors, which is very exciting. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but over here, there's a lot filled in already. So, it's getting denser and denser. There are only a few stitches missing. I think one up here and another one down here. But otherwise, I'm getting close to that edge over here to choose my colors from there. So they might get darker with the time. Um, 
I did more down here and then a lot of confetti stitches over the whole piece, <laughs> um, which you probably cannot see very well. But I really do enjoy stitching that extreme cross-country. So although this project is always kind of boring for you to see, for me, it's very exciting to stitch that way. <laughs> but I also can't wait to get into some browns or grays maybe, so you can actually see something. <laughs> It is stitched on 25 count, a light blue even weave. I'm stitching two over one ten stitch. Needle Mender is from Lenka Designs. And I think I'm now on my eighth color. So seven colors are already done, which you cannot see. As I said, it's a lot of um, off-white colors. I remember the first three colors I had was color number one, color number two, and a blend of those two colors. And those colors were... 3024 and 3072. Hold those two close together and you see basically no difference. <laughs> so I stitched both colors and then I stitched the blend out of those. Um, so you, that's why you basically cannot see a difference in color and I tell you there are eight different colors in here. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty cool. I still need, I think, 9000 more stitches this year. So I definitely finished the next color and probably a few more and I can't wait. And I really hope I get into some of those grays from in here, but we'll see about that. Yeah, that's that one. I just, I really love this. And as I said, I just really love the way I stitch it. But I know it's not really exciting for you. <laughs> and I can understand that. Um, so, as I said, I finished those really early, um, those challenges. And as I said, I have those weekly challenges I want to do, and then I have monthly challenges. And those monthly challenges from the Magical Stitches Mystery <laughs> Challenge group on Facebook, um, those, I actually decide which ones work with the prompt. With the weekly ones, I mostly read through, hope something fits and uh, jumps out at me and most times it doesn't. So I just take one of those with Coco Mod Finish projects. With the month monthly ones, I really want to hit the prompt and find something that fits. So with the Jimny Sweep, I totally forgot the prompt. I pause this video and tell you in a sec. So the Jimny Sweep worked because I needed uh, a whip where the name starts with the letter in the word triumph. So that Jimmy Sweep worked for that. Um, and I finished those 1010 stitches before I moved on. And the project I moved on to, sorry for bumping the camera, I have to put my uh, phone down here so I know which prompts <laughs> I stitched on for everything. So on Friday, I then started with my with the other monthly challenges. There are four prompts every month. And as I said, with the Jimmy Sweep, I already finished one. The week before, I wanted to finish another one and I just did not have the time. I ran out of time and I just started another one. So I, on Friday morning, I wanted to finish that prompt. And I brought out Super Size Cliffhanger Max Color Artwork is by Amy Stewart, charted by Heavenin of Designs. I finished my first challenge. Um, went on to the third one for the month and the fourth challenge for the month was once again on cliffhanger because I needed to stitch on something with a book in it. So that fits pretty well. Um, and I did get to the second challenge on Saturday and finished that one on Saturday as well. So I show you a picture of what it looked like last time here. And since you saw it that last time, I think I did something like 1,500 stitches on this one. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm just so happy. Um, this is stitched on 40 count antique, no, sorry, 40 count Newcastle linen. Um, and I'm stitching one over two ten stitch. And this is the page I'm presently working on. I stitch on the pages in a random uh, order, but in a way I can reach them. So either directly next to each other or diagonally, um, but those are stitched in random order. That's why it looks 
the way it does. <laughs> um, and with this page, I already had stitches in every part of the design. And uh, right now, I think the next color is 3011 or something like that. So I'm getting closer to the end. I'm going through the color list and just stitching on the next color that has stitches in this page and completing the color over the whole page before I move on to the next color. Overall, there are 200 colors in the design, so it's slow going, and all of those colors are bronze. <laughs> Most colors are bronze. And yeah, this is where I got to, and I'm just so happy with that. I made a lot of progress. I'm getting closer and closer to finishing the page. I cannot wait to have that page done. That will be really exciting. But yeah, this is where I'm at right now. And I can't wait to get back to this one. I really love it. But I have done, I think, over 2,000 stitches now this year. Yeah, definitely over 2,000 stitches this year. And I only want to do 4,000. <laughs> so there's not a lot left until my year-end goal is done. I do hope to finish that page and find out which page I'm going to stitch on next. Um, as I said, I'm choosing that randomly. So I don't know yet. I only decide which page is next when this one is done. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to find out which page will be next. If it's one of those up here with a lot of black, because those are kind of fast. Or if it will be something down here or here um, with a lot of confetti, or if I'm moving further down to, to the back of the book, something like that, that would be pretty amazing. Or if I move over here so I get close to that ribbon. Very exciting things, all of those. So yeah. Can't wait to find out which page is next, but first I have to finish that one. And so far, I don't have any immediate plans to stitch on this one next. So we'll see. But I had a lot of fun stitching that much on this one. Okay, next. As I said, I stitched on cliffhanger on Friday morning and then again on Saturday. And in between, I stitched on something else to finish the third prompt of the monthly challenges. The third prompt was to stitch on something where a secret passageway could be hidden. So I stitched on Raven Creep by Mirabilia because she is standing in a castle and in those uh, turrets in the back or in the castle itself, there could be a lot of secret pas passageways. So I'll show a picture of what it looked like last time here. And this is where I got to. So as you can see, I did stitch on this side over here. I needed at least 500 stitches and I did a bit more, but not a lot. Um, she stitched on 32 count gray linen and I'm stitching two over two four crosses. Um, yeah, and basically I finished that part up here then there, that over here. And now I'm moving from left to right in this um, design and background. Um, there's a bit more. So basically this and this is what I want to finish first before I then move into the border and finish the complete border. Um, as you can see, there are a few stitches missing on the side. Those are in the border. So I'm stitching those whenever I have finished everything in the background over here before I then move into her dress and finish her dress. Uh, the needle miner, I think I did not say, is from Denka Designs. And... She's beautiful, and she is now my oldest non-full coverage whip. I started her in October 2019. So, yeah, she will be coming out a lot more over the next few weeks, but I talk about that during plans. But yeah, beautiful. Okay, that's her. And then I did have another day left, the Sunday, and in my rotation, um, in the beginning of the year, I decided this day would be the day for a random whip because I know with the rotation I had planned, um, with my oldest full coverage whip every Monday, oldest non full coverage whip every Tuesday, and then my whip go projects, there would not be a whole lot of variety in my projects during the week. And a few projects might not see the light of day <laughs> for a very long time. 
So that's why I decided to go with a random whip as well. And uh, this week, or this Sunday, my Tiny Decisions app, that's basically an app where you can put all your projects in and then choose this random one. And this week it shows Norwegian ship under sale. This is the small edition. It's also by Golden Kite. And uh, I show a picture of what it looked like last time here. And this is where I got to. So basically I finished the column I had started. And this took me so much time. I basically yesterday had the whole day off. I had nothing else to do except for stitching. And I still took me basically the whole day to finish that bit of a column. Um, I think I did a bit more than 300 stitches, which would normally take me about three hours on any other project. With this one, it takes me way longer. Um, and I come back to that in a bit. But first, this is stitched on 18 count antique white Ada. I'm stitching two of the wonderful crosses, Nieman from Denker Designs. You can probably see the column lines, but I don't care. <laughs> Um, I know they are there and I know there are ways to avoid those, but I don't think this project will ever end up on my wall. I do enjoy stitching it most times, but and I do love the picture, but I don't think it will end up on my wall because it's just super, super big. And I don't think I have that much wall space to actually put it up. So I don't care about the column lines. Um, and yeah. It's just, it's the way it is. But I'm super happy with how those sales turn out. They look amazing, but they take so much time and so much effort. And yeah, <laughs> this project, this year, I want to do 10,000 stitches and as my year end goal. So far, I am not yet at 700 stitches done. I'm close, but not yet there. So pretty early on in the year. I decided to keep track of how far, far along I am and what day in the year it is. And how many days I still need to finish my goal if I do 100 stitches every day. So far, I would still need 94 days to finish this project with 100 stitches every day. Or to finish my year goal on this project, not the whole project, but my year goal on this project. Um, I would need another 94 days. That means latest at the end of September, I wouldn't need to start to do 100 stitches every day on this project to in the end of the year finish my goal. I will keep track of that number, how many days I still need to finish my year goal with 100 stitches every day. Because as I said, it takes so much time First of all, it's full cross. Second, I'm working from a paper chart instead of pedicure. So I always have to search for symbols and sometimes that's really hard. Um, third, there are a ton of colors in there. I think overall more than 200 colors. And fourth, two thirds of those colors are blended colors. So I need two colors to, to build one. Um, and then I often have one stitch and have to pack it away again. It just takes a lot of time. I do enjoy this, pro this project, as I said. I do enjoy working on it. I do enjoy the picture. Um, it's just, it takes a lot of effort, a lot more effort than my other projects. Um, as I said, normally I can do 100 stitches in an hour. Most projects I can do way more than that with this one. 100 stitches in an hour are hard. Um, so I just know that if I have to force myself to stitch a lot on this project to finish my year and goal, I would lose interest and I probably would lose my stitchy back. So I'm going to continue stitching on it whenever it comes up. I'm going to enjoy stitching on it whenever it comes up because I don't have to force myself to get a specific sorry, a specific number of stitches done or anything like that. I also know that there's probably no way to finish a whole column in a day. Um, on other projects, for example, Colorida Mountains, which is similar, um, the size of a column is similar, that normally isn't a problem. With this one, it is. 
So I just, I know that, I keep that in mind and I keep my plan B in mind to do 100 stitches every day to in the end finish my year and go. Um, I do hope it hasn't, does not need to come to that point, but I also know that it's a plan B and I can do that in the end. But yeah, so far, this is my region shift on the same. As I said, I'm really happy with it. Don't get me wrong. But it's also very involved. <laughs> um, if I have like 10 minutes or anything like that. On some projects, I bring it out anyways and stitch on it for a bit. No way with this one. <laughs> but yeah, it looks amazing. It really does. So here it is so far. And now let's move on to my plans for this week. Um, as I said, Sleepy Hollow by Glennon Place is going to be my new travel project. So hopefully doing a bit of progress on this one during the whole week. Then today is Monday. So I'm going to stitch on Polly Rain Mountains by Golden Kite. Hopefully finishing the column I have started. Tomorrow is Tuesday. I stitch on my oldest non full coverage piece, which is the Raven Queen. Hopefully doing a bit more over here. On Wednesday and Thursday, I stitch on a Whipco project called Not Finished. No, sorry, I stitch on a Whipco project called for this month. And this week, it is once again the Jimmy Sweep by Golden Kite. So a bit more progress on this one. On Friday and Saturday, I stitch on a Whipco project called Not Finished. Um, and with that project, hopefully in those two days, finish my two, um, sorry, finish my weekly challenges for the Magical Stitches Mystery. The Whipco project called Not Finished this week that I chose randomly is Color Mountains by Golden Kite. So it gets an additional two days this week, which is good. I still need quite a bit. And because I think I will be able to finish my year end goal, uh, sorry, my weekly goals Friday and Saturday, I still have the Sunday left. So I choose, so I chose a random whip. And once again, I landed on the region ship on the sale this month. So a bit more progress on this one. Going to start the next column in here. And that's this week. So those are all my plans. Um, and all my whips. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked my progress. And uh, yeah, as I said, not a whole lot variety for next week. Basically, the same projects minus one or two. <laughs> so yeah, just not a lot of difference, but that's it. Um, sometimes that happens. And during May, I hopefully have a lot of different projects once again. So as I said, I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.